Today is Wednesday, April 25th. It's about 11.08 a.m. Yeah, that's right, it is 11.08 a.m. Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Ramana Maharshi and some things that he has said that uh, helped me kind of unravel the mystery of the moon and the Baladi Avashas of the moon. Because, you know, this is a question that a lot of Vedic astrologers come to. Um, essentially, the moon being exalted in zero to three degrees of Taurus, being in a dead Avashta. Why would the moon be exalted in a dead Baladi Avashta? And then it seems like these Avashas are maybe being contradictory. Um, I know a lot of people have questioned this and wondered this. And to be fair, uh, I talked to Ryan about this, Ryan Kurzak, because he's a big fan of Ramana Maharshi. And he had tried to convey this point to me in the past, but I just didn't really understand it. So he was, he understood this before me, just to give, give credit where credit's due. Um, but I had my own realization and understood this, and then I wanted him to come on my channel, but he's been busy, so he didn't have time. Um, so basically, the the moon, like I said, it's it's exalted in that's one set of avashtas, but then the baladi avashtas, if you've heard of those, those are about where a planet is within a sign, and if it's in the beginning uh, of a sign, of a negative sign, it starts out dead, and then it slowly becomes an adult as it gets to the middle of a sign, and then at the end it becomes young. For an odd sign, it starts out young as an infant, gets to a juvenile state in the middle, and then old at the end. So essentially planets are strongest when they're in the middle of a sign, basically. Um, now, the thing is that Scorpio, the opposite place where the moon is debilitated, it's also zero to three degrees. So the moon is debilitated and exalted in a dead of Ashta. So how does that make sense? I've always wondered until I came to this uh, conclusion here. So I will read to you a little excerpt from Ramana Maharshi's book, Talks with Ramana Maharshi. It's a really good book. Uh, just. This video is also a book review, so get this book five out of five stars, and this is why. Um, so, I'll just read you this talk. This is talk number 99. And just hear this and think about the moon and the bloody of Ashes, and maybe you can figure this out on your own while I'm explaining this. A sannyasi asked, a sannyasi means a renunciate. It is said that the self is beyond the mind, and yet the realization is with the mind. Mano na manute, manasa na matam, manasai vidam maptyam vyam. The mind cannot think it. That what this means is the mind cannot think it. It cannot be thought of by the mind, and the mind alone can realize it. How are these contradictions to be reconciled? So this sannyasi is asking Ramana Maharshi these different quotes from the scriptures, but they seem to be contradictory, um, saying that the mind cannot think it, but at the same time only the mind can realize it. So Ramana replies, Atman is realized with Mruta Manas, dead mind, quote unquote in parentheses. Mruta is like Mruta, the, the dead of Ashta. So he's saying Mruta Manas, and Manas means mind. So he's saying, Atman is realized with dead mind, i.e., mind devoid of thoughts and turned inward. Then the mind sees its own source and becomes that. It is not as the subject perceiving an object. When the room is dark, a lamp is necessary to illumine and eyes to cognize objects. But when the sun is risen, there is no need of a lamp, and the objects are seen. And to see the sun, no lamp is necessary. It is enough that you turn your eyes towards the self-luminous sun. Similarly with the mind. To see the objects, the reflected light of the mind is necessary. To see the heart, it is enough that the mind is turned towards it. Then the mind loses itself and the heart shines forth. So if we think about that, you might be getting to get a clue of where I'm going with this. So the moon is exalted in Taurus in the dead of Ashta because Taurus is the sign of Venus. It's the sign of the heart chakra. 
and it's the sign of Tor it's the sign of Venus that is ascending, that is moving up to God, because in the springtime, like how it is now in Taurus, maybe that's why I wanted to make this now. You may notice in the spring the creative energy is just moving upward. You feel more creative. You might even feel more musical, more poetic, more artistic at this time. I've always felt this way every year at spring. Uh, you may feel more emotional, more inspired. You know, Krishna says of the seasons, I am spring, you know? So it's the time when the energy is ascending naturally. The sun is getting higher and higher in the sky. There's more and more day, less and less darkness. So really all the signs of the Atharayana are like going that way. But Taurus is where we finally get to the heart chakra. Before in Pisces, we were in the water chakra. Then in Aries, we were in the navel, the fire element chakra and then we're now in Taurus the we're moving ascending into the heart chakra so this is where the 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 energy is at in Taurus so the moon being there and in a dead state means that it's dead to the world to the externals and so it's turned inward so the moon is essentially sinking into the heart when the moon is exalted in Taurus uh, that's another term that Ramana uses with meditation and things he's saying um, you know, a lot of the practices that he's advocating are essentially used to still the thoughts and allow the mind to just sink back into the heart, the real being. Um, so he really clears, clarifies it here, if you ask me, um, why the moon is exalted in Taurus in a dead avashta. And now we understand why the moon is debilitated in Scorpio in a dead avashta, because Scorpio is the opposite, is the sign of the the vulnerabilities of the ego and the battle of the ego and the dark night of the soul and as the sun is going down and so when the moon is there and it's in a dead state it can't do anything really that productive about that you see and so it's like kind of just the opposite of this Taurus thing and since the moon is the most receptive factor it's like the moon or the mind is receptive to only the, the bad things of Scorpio, like the vulnerabilities, the needs of the ego, or the, the fact that everything is dying and decaying and, and is falling apart. And so there's this sense of urgency. And so that one of the tough things of having the moon within the first three degrees of Scorpio is there's like a sense of urgency. There's a sense of like, it's hard to just enjoy the now and just be in the moment and be in the now and enjoy life on planet Earth um, because the it's hard for the moon to just it's it's kind of like uh, like what I just said the opposite of Taurus basically so it's hard to explain um, that side of it but moon and Scorpio it's hard for one to be receptive to the heart and to all the good things as much as it is um, to focus on the the negative sort of he also says in the middle of a long talk talk number 187 if you want to look it up I'm sure this is online somewhere um, but I do recommend getting the book and not staring at screens any more than you have to in terms of just the way you're living your life. Um, get, a, get a book is better. Um, but uh, he says here, in Sahaja Samadhi, natural Samadhi, however, the mind has resolved itself into the self and has been lost. Differences and obstructions mentioned above do not therefore exist here. The activities of such a being are like the feeding of a somnolent boy perceptible to the onlooker but not to the subject. The driver sleeping on his moving cart is not aware of the motion of the cart because his mind is sunk in darkness. Similarly, the Sahaja Jani remains unaware of his bodily activities because his mind is dead, having been resolved in the ecstasy of Chit Ananda, the essence of being, the self or the heart. So, um, so yeah, so hope that helps you guys kind of uh, maybe get a get a better insight of the moon and its exaltation and debilitation and that maybe it wasn't a contradiction and a mistake for Prashara or all these sages to give those avastas and maybe they're not contradictory and maybe we just need to contemplate more and listen to the sages and the teachers of Vedic tradition and they might have the answers to these questions. Thank you.